guys, welcome back. Today we're going to talk about independent events and finding their probability. Now, in the last lesson that we learned, we talked about all of the different types of tables or charts we can make to figure out how many different options we have. And that's great, but that can be super annoying if you have like 50 options the first time and 100 options the second time. No one wants to make a tree diagram that represents that. So we're going to learn about some shortcuts for finding those probabilities today. So an independent event are events that are not affected by another event. So like if I flip a coin twice, the first flip has nothing to do with the second flip. I still have a 50% chance of getting each head or tail on each flip. Rolling a die the first time does not affect the second time. I still have the same chance of getting a six both times. Rolling a die and then picking a card. Both independent events because whatever I roll does not influence the card I'm going to pick. A dependent event would be like if I have a bag of marbles and I chose one marble and looked at the color and then set it aside and then I picked another marble. Whatever marble I pick first will change the probability of what I could pick second. Okay, But if I were to put the marble back after the first one, then the probability is the same. We'll go more into dependent events tomorrow. So when you're finding the probability of two independent events, you can use the multiplication rule to find the total probability. And the multiplication rule is you multiply the probability of your first choice times the probability of your second choice. Okay, And if there's more than two choices, you just keep multiplying the numbers together. So let's go through and look at one. So you have four poles in your closet, one red, one green, and two blue ones. You have three different kinds of pants, one pair of shorts, one pair of pants that are clean, and another pair of pants that are dirty. Okay, So if you randomly choose a shirt and a pair of pants, what is the probability, A, that you get a red polo and just the pair of shorts? So I'm going to say, okay, my first choice is I'm picking my red polo. So my red polo, and actually I'm just going to write this off to the side here. So this is part A. So we want to find the probability of getting a red polo. Well, there are four polo options, so that's my number on the bottom, and I have one red one, so that's my first probability choice. And my second choice is the probability of getting shorts. And I had one pair of shorts out of three total pairs of pants. So now I'm just going to multiply straight across. One times one is one. Four times three is twelve. So I have a one chance tan one out of twelve chance of picking the red polo and the shorts. So sometimes we'll write this as pair of probability of red and shorts. Okay? Alright. So I'm just gonna shrink this and then go on to part B which will be very similar. So part B says we're going to find a blue polo and a clean pair of pants. So it's very specific. So we want to know the probability of the blue polo times the probability of our clean pants. So blue shirts, we have two out of four blue shirts. Okay, And then we had three pairs of pants, so bottom number is three, and I had one pair of clean pants. And then I'm going to multiply across the top and bottom again. So 2 times 1 is 2. 4 times 3 is 12. And we always simplify if possible. So there's a 1 out of 6 chance probability of getting a blue shirt and clean pants. Okay. So we can really break down those probabilities instead of having to make a chart and figure out how many total options we have over how many chances we get of getting blue and clean pants, okay? Also, just so you know, you can simplify before you multiply. That might even make it easier. So I could have reduced two-fourths to one-half and then multiplied just to make my math a little bit easier, particularly if we're dealing with a lot of big numbers, okay? Let's go on to the next one here. So we're going to have a jar of marbles. We have three blue, one black, five red. After pulling each marble, you replace it in the jar and then draw again, okay? So we're not putting the marble aside, we're putting it back in. So we're still going to have the same chance of getting every marble each turn. So that's why it's called an independent event. So A is two blue marbles in a row. So we want to know the probability of blue times the probability of blue. So we had three blue marbles out of a total of three, four, plus five would be nine marbles. Okay. And I would have that exact same chance here again because I'm putting the marble back. OK, 
okay? So, if I reduce these before I multiply, that's one-third times one-third. One times one is one, three times three is nine. So I have a one out of nine chance of picking two blue marbles right in a row. And again, we can label that as blue and blue. You could write the whole word out or just say B and B. Okay? All right, and then the next one, we want to know the probability of getting a blue and then a black. Okay? So my chance of getting blue is just like what I had before. It's three-ninths is the probability of blue. Okay? Times my probability of getting black would be 1 out of 9. And again, I'm going to simplify my fraction. So 3 ninths reduces to 1 third times 1 ninth. 1 times 1 is 1. 3 times 9 is 27. So I have a 1 out of 27 chance of getting a blue marble, then a black. So I could label this as probability of blue, then black. Okay. All right, let's try one more. and Maybe pause the video and see if you can figure it out on your own. So you have a jar with two red marbles and two green marbles. After pulling the first marble, you place it back in the jar. What is the probability of getting the same color twice? So now this one I could have two reds or two greens. So I have to find two probabilities. So if the first probability is red, I have a 1 out of 4 chance of getting red the first time and a 1 out of 4 chance of getting red the second time. I'm sorry, that's incorrect. I have 2 out of 4 chance of getting red marble the first time and 2 out of 4 chance of getting red the second time, which would be 1 half times 1 half, which is 1 fourth. Okay? Now on green, again, I have 2 out of 4 chances to get green the first time and 2, sorry guys, and two out of four chance of getting green the second time. So this reduces to one half times one half. One times one is one, two times two is four. Now I need to add these probabilities together because I could get two red or two green and that would mean the same as getting the same color twice in a row. And one fourth plus one fourth is two fourths which reduces to one half, okay? So I have a one, chance, one half chance of getting two reds or two greens, okay? I hope this video finds you well.